Welcome to HSM Special. Today I have the honor to have with us here Dr. Robert Kaplan. As you know, Dr. Kaplan has been developing together with some other authors and consultants very important tools for management. The most done are the ABC costing in the balance score card. Professor Kaplan is graduated and obtained his master's degree in electric engineering from MIT and has a PhD in operational research from Cornell University. He is uh, chairman of the Palladium Group and, of course, a well-known author of several management books. So, Professor Kaplan, welcome. Nice to have you here. Nice to be with you, Julio. Very good. Could you, in, uh, in brief words, what is really the balance scorecard? What is it for? And uh, how it came to your mind? How do you research and decided that this would be an important tool for companies and now for government? Well, I recognized in the 1980s that the financial measurements by themselves were insufficient to guide companies to success. Mm -hmm. That they were really measures of a past strategy and past performance, but didn't provide indicators of the future. So many companies might be creating a great deal of value by creating better customer relationships, by being better at quality and delivering on time, and by attracting and retaining terrific employees and giving them the skills they need uh, to create more value for customers. But if you didn't measure those things, you weren't sure, uh, you know, are you really achieving that? And in the short run, companies could report better financial performance by cutting back on training employees, by not maintaining equipment, by not improving processes, and by uh, alienating customers, not investing in customer relationships. And so we wanted to come up with a broader set of indicators that would better reflect the total value creation that companies experienced in a period. And we didn't want to throw away financials. They're still important. They measure success ultimately. But we needed to supplement them with metrics about what the best companies were doing in the short term to create future value. And so those were measures related to customer relationships, it was measures related to process improvement and innovation, and measures related to employee capabilities and motivation. So you can think about the balanced scorecard as a more robust uh, general set of measurements that goes beyond the financials to capture the drivers of future value creation. Who, who was your first customer that applied successfully uh the BSC? Well, the first uh, set of companies that came to us right after our article was published were, were uh, we had, there was an engineering construction company, a uh, division of Halliburton, uh, for their, how to guide underwater construction projects with their targeted customers like Shell and British Petroleum. We worked with a major insurance company, Signal Property and Casualty Insurance. We worked with a major bank in New York City, then called Chemical Bank, and then emerged with uh, uh, Chase Bank, and also mobile, mobile marketing refining in the U.S. So I would say those were the, the top five companies. Pioneers. Oh, yeah, they were the pioneers. <laughs> uh, in fact, in our first book, uh, we talked about mobile. We called it Pioneer Petroleum. Right. Uh, to recognize that, but that was really mobile. I would say that uh, the balance scorecard is a tool to implement strategy. I mean, how did the balance scorecard really help the execution of a strategy? Are we talking in the public sector or the... Private or... Uh, private, well, because we feel that you can have word statements of the strategy, but people have different meanings that they apply to the words, and you hear targeted customers and innovation. Everybody has their own definition about what that means. And even if they agree on the words, they implement it in different ways because of the different interpretation. So one of the powers of measurement, and the balanced scorecard is about measurement, is it forces clarification. When you measure something, you make it more tangible and you make it more specific. And so we've given executives a way of not just uh, communicating their strategy better, but really making it more specific so everybody has a common understanding and a common agreement. Because we found people, yeah, they agree to the words of the strategy, but it came to measurement, big debates screw up because they had different Vision, so you would say, if you cannot life. measure, you cannot manage. Yeah, and then that's the second part. It not only forces clarification of the strategy, but it promotes improvement of the strategy. Because now we feel if you don't measure something, you can't improve it. So if you were trying to be expert at bowling, 
but you, every time you threw the ball, you didn't know how many pins you knocked down. Right. You wouldn't get very much better at bowling. Right. You weren't getting feedback for what you were doing was successful. So measurement provides the feedback uh, as to whether we're improving on those metrics that are most important to the strategy. Do you have a, an experience in, in some other countries using your methodology to plan and uh, to put the strategy together? Well, I mean, the first examples were actually in Brazil, worldwide, in this map that was developed by task forces in the Confederation of National Industry, which has produced a strategy map and a set of initiatives related to achieving that strategy for Brazil. Industries, it also needs the cooperation of the public sector and leaders of the government to buy in. And I think there has been some progress, perhaps limited, but some progress on some key initiatives uh, accepted and implemented at the, at the national level that will move this agenda forward. Now, in another country, Botswana, which is in the uh, southeastern part of Africa, just north of uh, the country of South Africa, there the public sector has embraced this concept. It's a wonderful civil service, probably the best uh, governed country in all of Africa. And they said they wanted to promote the economic and social well-being of their citizens. And so there, the strategy map was launched at the highest level, uh, at the prime minister's cabinet level, and they have actually formulated a strategy map and balanced scorecard for Botswana to promote its economic and social development. And now each of the ministries in Botswana is defining a balanced scorecard for itself that is in inspired by and informed by the national balanced scorecard and thinking about what does it mean to them? How can they contribute? And now there's resource allocation that is now tied to the execution of the strategy. So it's just one example. Uh, one of the uh, strategic themes on the scorecard was to improve uh, education so they can have better jobs for their citizens. And they recognized they had only one university and was not sufficient to train all the uh, citizens they saw needing uh, secondary education. So major initiative, we have to establish a second university. Okay, Mr. Kaplan, really a pleasure, a honor to have you here in our HSM specials. Thank you for your collaboration, for your time, and I hope to see you in the near future. Thanks a lot. Thank